quadcopter flies through a balloon ring. Cool, but what's the big deal? Well, look, Mom, no hands. There's no mouse or joystick here. It's all the power of thoughts. Then the signal coming from his brain is being picked up by these sensors and then decoded and sent through a Wi-Fi system to control this flying quadcopter. With support from the National Science Foundation, biomedical engineer Bin He and his team at the University of Minnesota created this brain-computer interface to help people with disabilities regain the ability to do everyday tasks. The goal is eventually to make this technology the goal to really help people sit on the wheelchair with a variety of disability. Professor He is still testing out the system with college students. Before maneuvering the quadcopter for real, they train for 10 to 20 hours using a virtual aircraft flying over a computer-generated campus. We insert two different kinds of conductive gel that help us conduct a signal from his brain. The interface is non-invasive, no implants, just an electroencephalography or EEG cap with 64 electrodes. When a participant thinks about a specific movement, neurons in the brain's motor cortex produce tiny electrical signals. And the computer is going to read that digital signal and do all the processing and extract out the brain signal and control quadcopter. Participants develop their own motor imagination or simple mind tricks to help differentiate between moving the object up, down, right, and left. So for me, catching a baseball is very different in my left hand from throwing a baseball in my right hand. So that really helps me kind of focus on one particular hand at a time to help move the helicopter to the right or the left. The interface is designed to help with simple everyday tasks like turning on a light switch. But Professor He and his team chose the quadcopter for the testing phase to keep participants challenged and eager to succeed. The more fun they feel, more engaging, the better performance they can do. Whether it's a wounded veteran or a stroke patient, the aim is independence. Eventually, he says this interface may help rewire brain circuits to bypass damaged areas. You want to make a phone call, you want to turn on the TV, you want to switch the channel, you want to surf the internet. There's a huge societal and economic benefit to, to the society eventually with this research. Harnessing brain power to help people with disabilities do for themselves. A high-flying idea. Just think about it. For Science Nation, I'm Miles O'Brien.